Back in the 1950s, when I was a young man, I had an experience I will never forget. It was a glorious summer's day. I had just bought a new car and I had the top rolled down, my sunshades on, and I was cruising along listening to the radio. When all of a sudden, the sky above began to glitch back and forth, from blue to grey. Then I noticed what looked like a deer standing in the road ahead, except when the sky glitched the deer, for a few seconds, morphed into a different appearance altogether. A creature unlike I had ever seen before. Then all of a sudden, another one of these strange looking creatures rushed out into the road from the trees, causing me to swerve, forcing me downhill along a mud track. I bounced up and down in my seat, trying to keep control of the vehicle until I smashed through some gates and came to a halt. I turned the key a few times to restart the engine, but it wouldn't start. Then the radio started going haywire, quickly switching from channel to channel before there was nothing but static. I turned the radio off and looked down the hill ahead of me, where there looked like a small town. As I approached on foot, the sky remained dark and grey. The town looked deserted. The windows on buildings were either smashed or boarded up, and everywhere was smothered in overgrown weeds and grass. I had walked about halfway down the main street, when all of a sudden two of these strange creatures crouched down over something, and whatever it was, they were eating it devouring its insides. I stopped dead in my tracks and tried to quietly slip away, but the creatures heard me. They turned in a flash and stared at me with dark ominous eyes, blood dripping from their jaws as they let out a loud monstrous scream. Then I ran as fast as I could down an alleyway which led to a dead end blocked by a fence. And on that fence, I was horrified to see a body. A body badly burnt and strung up with its arms outstretched. I stood hypnotized by the horrific vision when I realized all around me bodies like the one on the fence were crawling along the ground towards me, grabbing at my legs. In a panic, I unclasped their grip with my hands and kicked my way free, running with an intense fear into a dark empty building where I hid. I could hear distant screams of the creatures outside getting closer and closer. So I moved further into the abandoned building, but when I went through the door, there, levitating a few feet off the ground in front of me, was a giant ball of mass. It was tumbling and swirling silently, just hanging in the air. I stood staring, bewildered. I was about to touch it when the sound of an air raid siren wailed through the air. I could hear the creatures approaching, so I ran and hid. Then watched as the creatures, as many as a hundred or so, urgently ran into the giant swirling ball and disappeared. Seconds after the last creature vanished, so did the giant ball of mass. I hurriedly made my way back to the car, and when I sat in the driver's seat and turned the key, the engine started, and the sound of Bill Haley's rock around the clock blared through the radio. I drove away at speed, but when I looked in my rearview mirror, I saw hanging in the grey sky above the town a large oval metallic shape. Then the skies turned blue and the oval shape vanished with the grey. This happened one summer in the 1980s when I was about 10 years old. Me and my friends rode on our bikes to some nearby woods where we found some hidden caves so we decided to explore. I took out the torch I always carried in my bag and led the way into the darkness of the cave. It wasn't long before we came to a dead end. 
There was nothing interesting inside, it was just an empty shell. We were about to head back when my friend noticed an opening, just above Ed Height built into the rock face that we could have sworn wasn't there before. The hole was just about big enough to fit in, so we climbed up some rocks to take a look. I shone my torch into the hole which looked like some sort of tunnel. Although apprehensive, we were all curious to where it might lead to, so we decided to go in. The tunnel wasn't big enough to stand up in, so we crawled through on our hands and knees. I was the only one with a torch, so I led the way. After a minute or so crawling, I thought I heard something, like an animal roaring, so I stopped and called out to the others behind me to ask if they heard it. They said they didn't and urged me to carry on. As I moved off again, the torchlight went out and I began to bang it to try and get it to work again, but it wouldn't. Then all of a sudden, I saw in the darkness ahead of me, something move, something large and ominous. I cried out and tried to turn around, but the tunnel was too tight, so I shouted to my friends to quickly crawl backwards, because there was something in here. They didn't believe me, till another screeching roar echoed throughout the cave, much louder this time. My two friends scrambled backwards, crawling as fast as they could. Then they stopped. The opening to the tunnel we entered had closed, as if it was never there. After a few panicky minutes debating what we should do, we decided there was only one direction we could go. As we slowly crawled along we heard no other sounds or saw any other movement ahead of us and hoped that whatever it was we saw and heard before had gone. When we reached the end of the tunnel we sat on a ledge and looked down below us into another enclosed cave. Then out of nowhere appeared a black hole floating in mid-air and out of that hole a strange looking creature fell to the ground. The black hole disappeared and the tall gangly creature slowly stood upright. We cowered back slightly in our hole to avoid being seen, then the creature disappeared from our view. Everything was still and silent. Then the creature slowly raised its head from below so it was level with ours. It looked straight into our scared eyes. It seemed to smile sarcastically, drooling from its mouth of razor-sharp teeth. Then it let out a loud roar, before moving quickly up the cave wall and out of a hole in the roof of the cave, into the daylight outside. Then the hole in the roof of the cave closed, and the one at the end of our tunnel opened. We told our parents who informed the police, but despite going back there several times over the years, the entrance to that tunnel has never been found ever again.